Today's video is all about using some different scrap. As you can see, this is an old Singer sewing machine. Now I've weighed it, it weighs 21.8 kilograms, so it's a lot of scrap, but I've got to strip it from all the other mild steel and other bits and pieces that are in it, and I should get very close to that figure. The sewing machine has been dismantled and as you can see there's lots and lots of nuts and bolts and screws, shafts, pins, other bits and pieces. But there's one thing that I really like taking these apart for and I'll show you in the next clip. Here is the prize that I'm looking at. Every sewing machine has these sorts of gears. They're usually right angle drive and they are two to one. I don't know why they're two to one but they are extremely useful when you want to make an internal combustion four-stroke model engine. You have to have the camshaft running half the engine speed. So with these bevel gears you can do that quite easily. And we'll show at the other end. We've got another set of gears there, so it's a double bonus, but these are one-to-one -one ratio. But the prize with these ones are, they are hardened gears. They're very top quality gears, meant to run for a long long time. And if you want to go and buy these things they are very expensive. Here is another example of some gears that I got out of another sewing machine. These are called skew gears. They give a 90 degree drive and yes you can use them for model internal combustion engines. And this is why I can highly recommend if you can get old sewing machine is to pull them apart for the scrap metal but also for the gears that are inside them. This is the scrap that I got from the sewing machine. There's a few small pieces here, the pulley and some covers, another small cover, but the two main pieces are here and here. So the grand total is 17.5 kilograms which will go a long way for my A6 crucible. Okay we're nearly ready for the melt. I've broken up 6.3 kilograms of the base for the sewing machine, you can see it there. And for 6.3, roughly 200 grams will be lost with oxidisation. So we'll see how it goes. Most of you would remember my last video, it was all about making a bell from scrap cast iron. Well, there were some lessons learnt from that video and I'll pass them on to you in this video. So we've got two pieces here, they both came from the sewing machine. Now this one here I know is forged steel and this one here is cast iron. And I'll show you how I know that. And this is the forging. Now have a listen to when I drop it onto the concrete floor. It will ring like a bell. In comparison, have a listen to that. That is the grey iron casting and have a listen when I drop it onto the floor. Ooh, have a listen to that difference there. Just made a dull clunk. Now I know some of you are going to complain that the drop test is not enough proof that it's either cast iron or forged steel. So you're going to say, hit it with a hammer. Okay, I'll do that. And we'll see if it bends or breaks. This is the result with the first hammer blow. Have a look at that. Oh yes, bend there. There's another view. It's definitely not cast iron. This is the piece that I know is cast iron. I'll give it a tap with a hammer and we'll see if it bends or if it breaks. Well, I think that was a really great result. Didn't bend. There's a grey structure in the cast iron and there's two pieces. It definitely is cast iron. This is the pattern I'm going to use today to test the sewing machine scrap. I carved out a rough likeness of an anvil and glued on my YouTube name on there with letters. There's another view of the back. And we'll see how we go. This is the anvil mould, we'll see how it separates. Yep. Badly. Bit of grinding needed there. 
what I've done is you can see there I haven't got the pattern square we'll give it another go Now here's a bit of an experiment. I'll put some foam in front of the microphone on the camera. It's a very windy day. See if it blocks out that horrible noise the wind makes. That's my first mould. That's my second mould. And the wedge test. And this is the third mould. It is time to have a look at the wedge test. This is the close-up of the wedge test and have a look at that. It's grey all the way through, no white at all. Sewing machine scrap is really good for casting. The wedge test looked really great but that was poured into a sand mould and now we'll have a look at the leftover ingot which has been poured into a steel mould This is the ultimate test for grey iron. I've poured it into a steel mould and if the iron's going to chill it will. But have a look at that, it's grey all the way through. This is the last mould I've poured. Knock it out. There we go, there's an anvil. This is the second mould that I poured. It's another anvil. This is the first anvil casting I poured. And we'll have a quick look at it. It wasn't a really great effort. As you can see, it broke away a lot just there and in there. Now why that happened is, as we'll turn over the casting, it's got lettering on the other side. So this is how I've got to wrap it from side to side like that. If you do it too hard, you'll break out the lettering. And that's what I'll show you on the other anvil casting. And the other thing is, it tends to shrink a lot the sewing machine scrap. Now I'll give you a demonstration here. 
that was not big enough there was not enough feed metal so you go here and you can see it it's going underneath so for the sewing machine scrap if you're going to use it it's great for thin castings because it's very soft and fine grain cast iron so if you're going to make steam engines or internal combustion engines it's probably the best material for that but if you're going to make thick castings like this it's probably a waste and you'll need probably larger risers to feed the shrinkage this is the second anvil casting I poured it's a bit cleaner not as much breakaway but unfortunately I wrapped it very hard and it started breaking in between the letters in there I don't know whether you can see it or not but it did a poor finish inside the letters there so this is the problem I've got when you're using a one piece pattern you've got to use a lot of wrapping force to get them out but if you've got letters on there it'll give you endless trouble but the same thing again it shrunk just here and these risers are just not big enough here are the two anvil castings together you can see you can compare them now what I've got to do for the next video I've got to trim these up and then I will be machining them and we'll try it out as an anvil and we'll see what they'll turn out like and you probably noticed also that I had three moulds well that mould will be in a future video as well and I'll be machining that one a lot for another video in my last video when I poured the cast iron bell I poured the leftover metal into spheres so there we've got it I've cleaned them up this is what they look like when they're cleaned up but an interesting thing with the spheres you could compare that one with that one you think that one would be twice the weight but no it's three times the weight looks can be deceiving